Dillian White and Jermaine Franklin, that's also on that same Saturday. Give us um, some heads up on Jermaine Franklin, please, boys, because I don't think I've seen him before. Um, Josh, you're smiling away there. Um, some thoughts, please. I was thinking the same thing that you were thinking in terms of when I saw the name Jermaine Franklin pop up, I couldn't really place him. I uh, see that he was in there with uh, Jerry Forrest and Rydell Booker. For some reason, I don't really remember the mm. fights, though. Mm. Uh, but that being said, of course, we know this is going to be sort of a bounce back for Dillian White. And, of course, if Dillian White isn't able to get past Franklin, then this is probably the it or the end for him at mm -hmm. that top level or being viewed as one of the top heavyweights that out, that are out there. Uh, that being said, um, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what is going to actually happen in this contest because I, I really don't have a, a understanding of of what uh, Franklin will be able to offer and and as far as Dillian White, he he seemed to be focused in terms of uh, the way he's speaking or, or in the things that I've seen written on him. So we'll see if he's able to defeat this undefeated, I guess you can say, sort of up and coming. This is my big stage moment fighter mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, there in the headline. But yeah, I don't really have anything objective I can really offer towards it because I don't really recall Franklin to that degree. Yeah. I mean, he's got, he's got the record, you know, 21 and 0, decent knockout ratio, I guess, 29 years old. I think, you know, if he was British, we'd probably get a bit more hype about him, but he's third, ranked 13th in the heavy of USA and 53 overall worldwide. Um, Alex, have you got anything to add to that one? You expect him? Benjamin Franklin, you know, uh, he's getting a shot. You know, he's American heavyweight. Um, America is, you know, we're waiting for the next heavyweight. With a win over Dillian White, it, prov it provides us with another, uh, you know, finally... Uh, a, a current contender besides Deontay Wilder. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, not much to say about Jermaine Franklin and the amateurs. He had a couple of de decent wins, you know, Cassius Cheney, uh, I think Craig Lewis, who he beat as a pro. And uh, if anyone knows, Cam F. Awesome. Uh, he's, a, oh, yeah. he's a famous amateur around here, a guy that, uh, you know, has been, uh, you know, been, been around for a long time. So, mm -hmm. so that, that's really Jermaine Franklin's claim to fame. Um, mm -hmm. Hasn't produced anything yet in the in the professional ranks uh jerry forrest forrest actually that yeah. was a controversial controversial decision uh very common here i'm sure maybe worldwide uh mm -hmm. you guys would know as, as well over there across the pond so yeah, definitely yeah we'll see what happens uh uh I, this is obviously i would i would assume a calculated risk for dillian white you know undefeated american heavyweight yeah um on his comeback toward a possibly getting the aj fight so um, you got to favor Dillian. Uh, we'll see what happens, though. Jermaine Franklin could surprise us. All right, cool. Um, also, that's quite a good fight as well. It's listed at the top here. Fabio Wardley against Nathan Gorman. That'll be a good test for Wardley, who's been going about business quite well. 13 knockout wins out of 14 overall wins. Um, yeah, there's a little bit of hype about him. Um, we always get a little excited about a heavyweight that can stop people. Um, Nathan Gorman has a loss against Daniel Dubois from a few years ago, uh, 2019. He's had a couple of wins since then, but not really against much. Uh, a lot of people actually thought that Gorman was going to beat Dubois when they faced off as well, so that was a good win, and I, I guess it's a bounce, more of the bounce back tough. But, um, yeah, I think... It's a good domestic scrap right good, there, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we know those names over here. Certainly. Um, do you think Wally's going to win that one? Go ahead, Josh. Uh, yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, well, you know, I think that, I mean, if Wally is going to be what Match Room thinks he's going to be, he needs to win this fight. Yes, yes. Uh, Nathan Gorman, I do recall him being uh, highly touted and, and many favoring him over Dubois. I, I favored Dubois. I, I just felt that... Um, his, his power, his size would come into play a bit more uh, in that particular fight, and ultimately it did. So Gorman is kind of mm -hmm. on that backtrack if he is to kind of be what 
he was expected to be at least uh, prior to that Dubois fight, then he should get this victory over Fabio Wardley. So I think this is a pretty uh, pretty decent uh, undercard here uh, as far as the potential matchups there. But I do think that Wardley has a good combination of uh, power, uh, speed. That being said, this is certainly a step up for him. Yeah. And time will tell if it's going to elevate him to that sort of stage where we can say that he is a, a world level competitor. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if he does, if he beats Gorman impressively, I think that sort of adds to the mix and, and that kind of moves him up a, a up a year or so. But uh, depending on how he looks, I think it will be telling uh, what the projections are for him in the future. Yeah. Yes, I guess he's one to just keep an eye on. I'm not entirely sold on him, if I'm honest. Um, but I've, I've, I've still, I've not seen all that much of him at the same time as well. So I guess it's one to see. Um, just worth a note there that Craig Richards is also under the card to that. He's not too bad, uh, light heavyweight. He lost to Josh, Joshua Watsi earlier in the year, and he's got a loss to Bivol as well. Um, and he's in against Richard Belotnik, so I think he's been in with everyone. Yeah, but what's he? Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, not too bad card that one, con- considering um, some of the draws we've had recently. 